Hey everybody, so I'm Wesley with Red Manufacturing and Custom Welding, and I'm going to give you a quick tip for the day. So we've been working on a Frontier DM1270 disc mower, and I actually have a video that we're working on right now as we're repairing it for how to fix this, but in the meantime, uh, we discovered that there's a crack in this housing. It comes from right here, runs all the way over, and there's actually a little bit of it right here too that reaches over, if you can see that. So what I'm going to do today is show you all how to repair this properly. Um, it's all the way through. I can feel the, the edge of it on the bottom with my finger. So I'm going to show you all how to repair this properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and buff all this off and get it clean. Alright, so now that I've got this buffed out to where we can see what's going on, see that crack goes all the way from here all the way across this bolt hole in there. It spreads out a little bit right here and then this one starts right in here and travels back with a little bit over there on that side of the bolt hole. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my angle grinder with a 1 8 wheel and I'm just going to barely score into this. This is thin, relatively thin material, maybe, maybe 3 16 thick. Um, so I don't want to just blow straight through it. There's a gear on the bottom side here that I don't want to get into. So I'm going to just score this, mainly to help me see what I'm doing, and then we're going to roll it. Alright, there's not much I can do in this corner right now because I don't have my die grinder with me. But, you can see that I've already gone through and ground these out, gouged them out, and went ahead and rebuffed out what was there because I don't want a bunch of grinding dust in it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm using my Bobcat 250 got it set on right about 100 amps, I mean not 100 amps, right at about 80 amps roughly. I'm going to use the uh, Lincoln 5P Plus 6010 electrode, 8th inch. And I'm going to go in, and I'm going to start here, and I'm just going to just whip across here. I'm going to try to be careful around these bolt holes. I'll probably wind up having to re-drill them anyway, but I don't want to fill them a whole lot in because I, when I drill them out, I don't want to deform the shape. So I'm going to do that all across all of these areas where I've ground out, just do a whip motion on them. And you'll see what it looks like when it's done. Alright, so now that I've got that welded up, see everywhere where I ground has been welded up. It even went through just a little bit down here, but that's fine. Had this not had a gear or, or a sprocket directly on the bottom, I probably, honestly, would have gone ahead and ground out deeper and went ahead and blown through it got some complete joint penetration on it since there's a sprocket down there I in the first place don't want to damage that sprocket in the second place um, it's going to be hard for me to resurface the bottom of it with a sprocket right there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grind these flat and I'm going to go ahead and grind them out just a little bit and then I'm going to go over it with a 7018 all right now that I've got that ground down and buffed back out you can see there's still some undercut here there was some down here but I ground it out that's the dangers of using a 6010 rod is they're really prone to getting undercut so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back with a 332 Lincoln X caliber 7018 rod and I'm going to go back and I'm going to weld over all that I just ground out to cap it now the thing about a 6010 also is, is it's also not a low hydrogen rod what that means is what is in the air around it there's hydrogen also, what is hydrogen? It's water. It's moisture. So when you weld up a crack like this, you wind up with the, pit, with the potential to get water molecules from the flux down in that weld. Now you've typically got about five minutes to get your um, root pass in, ground out, and get a hot pass in on top of it before you're prone to hydrogen cracking. What is a hot pass, you say? The hot pass is where you go in, right after your root pass, typically with a 6010, and you turn your heat up, and you really get in there and you get it really hot. And what that does is, there's grains and there's pores in this metal. When you start work, they're like this. As you heat it up, the grains and the pores do this. When it cools back down, they close back up, and you have the potential to catch hydrogen in those pores. So you go back with a hot pass that opens them up, lets them cool down way more slowly, so that all the hydrogen can um, release. That's why you use a low hydrogen rod like a 7018 on your cap and your fillers so that you don't have that issue. So 
now that I've got my root pass in, I'm not going to do a hot pass because this isn't a complete joint. What I'm going to do is just go back straight with my low high rod and burn that. All right. Now that I've gone back with my low hydrogen rod, I'm clear to go ahead and grind this flush and get my finish on it because I don't see any more evidence of cracking anywhere in the case. So I'm free to go ahead and put the finishing touches on it. I'll go ahead and grind this all down and then I'll probably go back with a sanding pad just to give it a smooth finish. And then I'm going to go back with a step bit and make sure that these holes are drilled out uh, round again. Alright, so I got everything sanded down like I like it. Got a pretty good finish on it. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my step bit to make sure these holes are drilled out the right size. That's all there is to it. Bam. There it is right there. So, that's what it looks like. Went ahead and uh, buffed down a little bit on the edge down here on the bottom. Because it had come through a little bit. So that's how you fix a crack in a casing on something that's kind of sensitive. Um, like I said, I didn't want to just blow straight through this because of that sprocket on the bottom. So I hope this helps y'all out down the line. Uh, this is not the same thing as welding up an open joint for complete joint penetration at all um, by any stretch of the imagination but it will get you for repairing cracks and, and equipment if you're not that conf that confident in your welding capabilities don't worry um, something like this is relatively easy keep your amps low um, but take your time that way you make sure that you fill it all the way in and you don't leave any undercut or any gaps or anything like that it had, like I said, had this not had that sprocket on the bottom, I probably would have went ahead and burned straight through it, but I didn't want to do that. But this should last. It's got some pretty good penetration on it, and um, I hope this helps. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't hate in the comments section. And um, I'm about to sign out. So uh, if you all want more videos, be sure to let me know. And this concludes your welding tip of the day.